um, denotes uh, a meaning that is uh, less than what you would consider. Uh, where are we? The affidavit, uh, the etymology um, is supposed to be that he has sworn, uh, but the, the reality is that uh, if I go to the site and pull off the definition, that an affidavit um, places you in a position where you are giving up certain rights. I'm just going to call up a definition right at the moment. I did do the research on these words some time ago, and I'm just going to call it up right now. Okay, affidavit. It's from 16th century Latin, and it means to bring forward, present, promise, assurance, concern, a fault or crime. But it, it's created from three words, offero, to bring forward, fides, promise, uh, and uh, vitium, fault, vice. So unlike affirmation, an affidavit contains the notion of fault, vice, and crime, which, which in certain jurisdictions means the individual that is signing the affidavit, called an affiant, is admitting guilt unwittingly. And it makes it even worse if it's notarized. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, you're saying that the affiant, affiant, is that how you pronounce it? You said yeah, that affidavit comes from three words. Offero, which is to bring forward, place, present. What I'm saying first, it's a word created specifically in the 16th century. In other words, it was a legal term created by the Roman cult for the benefit of the Roman cult. Okay, offero is the first part. Fides, promise, and vitium, fault, are the three elements that form affidavit. Oh. And built into it, you are the affiant when you sign it. And when you sign it, you are admitting unwittingly to guilt. That is the, the sting in the tail of uh, signing an affidavit built in. It is a confession. Okay? Wow. But an affirmation does not carry that sting. And so if I was to say to you, I would, be not, I would not be sending an affidavit, I would be sending an affirmation. Or if I'm an executor, and you've heard me talking about being a general executor, yeah? Okay. I'm not sure, you've heard me speak about being a general executor, the Office of General Executor, yeah? Um, yes. Okay, good. Then I would pr I'd, I'd put a pronouncement in, a pronouncement or an affirmation. I would not do an affidavit. Now, who you send it to depends on the issue at hand, the purpose of what you're doing, what the, aff what the affirmation or the pronouncement is supposed to achieve. Okay. So you said you would put in an affirmation or a pronouncement? Correct. Okay. Do you have samples someplace that I could go and look at for those, or are they, are they set up similar to an affidavit and just called it, something else? All you'd be changing is the title. Oh, and the word. title. Yeah. Yeah, like so you just call it an affirmation, not an affidavit. And wherever you'd use the word affidavit, you change it to affirmation. That's all you have to do. Awesome. All right. Just change it to affirmation. Okay. And the proper place to file it would be? Uh, it depends what you're dealing with. Are you dealing with a state matter, a federal matter, a local matter? Actually, I have a couple. I have a lot going on. One is a federal. Um, one is a federal case, and the other is a state matter where um, the um, police department uh, served. A, they came to my home and um, pulled me out and started searching without handing me a search warrant against my wishes, and and they just drug me outside with no on or anything, and they didn't bring the search warrant until like 15, 20 minutes into the search, Yeah. and different things that they've done, so I want to put it in, I was going to do an affidavit, but I'll just change the, word, the name of it to the affirmation, and yeah. if, um, if I put, you have 10 days to rebut, point for point, is that... Well, 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 okay. 
the great thing about using the word affirmation is that the word affirm is written into their statutes. So they give themselves the opportunity of putting an affirmation themselves. Right? Um, the, the, time, the time of rebuttal is really determined by their own system. Remember, you're putting in a document that you wish to be a public document. So it's not up to you to decide the, the, the time of rebuttal. It's really up to what they say is a normal time, and that's up to the court process, yeah? The recorder. So oh, normally see. you give people 14 day or 21 days. Um, but, you know, seven days is contract, 40, you know, 14 days perfected, 21 days. It, I, I would normally say that you give them 14 days is the normal time, okay? You said 21 days? 21 days is, is effectively in a, in a... If you put anything in your affirmation that is uh, equivalent to a negative averment, where you effectively say, I presume this, and if you don't return, then in 21 days, if there's been non-rebuttal, it's perfected. In other words, it's an agreement. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Good on you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's go one sec, one sec, one sec. Uh, okay, so I'll just go back to the chat here and we'll have a look and see what we've got in questions um, and then we'll go to the next caller. If you do want to call still live, uh, please get in the line and uh, click uh, star 8 or hash 8. We've got a few more minutes uh, where we can take calls. Um, okay, question is asked here, uh, by Judah. Can I please have a look at the UK time, links, etc.? Um, there was uh, some questions this week on the accuracy of the UK time. Well, a couple, couple of things. Uh, I've, I've had a couple of emails from, from different folk about the UK time system. Let me explain how the UK time system is structured without going in a long winded answer, but just some key, key things. When you type in on any of the areas where you can create a UK to your time, uh, it will give you a result, uh, and that result will produce the formal UK to your time in parts, for example, E, error, right down to the moon, day, and so on. And you'll see that on the, if you go to globe-union.org and you look at the, at the opening, or go to One Heaven, you'll see that formal array of, of time listed there. So that's the formal array of, of, of time for a particular day. If you look at a, the 18-digit number that's produced, and this is where I think people have been um, uncertain, when you put in a time and you put in, for example, your day, day, your born day, and you go back and you do it again, the number you've been concerned because you'll get a different number. You'll get a number that in the last six digits will be different. The first six will be the same. The second six will be the same, but the last digits will be different. That's because the number is calculated to a hundredth of a second. So it will be different every time you produce it unless through um, sheer timing and sheer luck, you do it at exactly the same millisecond that it will then produce the same number. So it's not a fault of the system that it's producing a different reference number of 18 digits. It's merely that when you're using that particular number, which we use as our unique trust number, it is to a hundredth of a second. Now, as to the question of whether there is a fault within the days or anything like that, every single day is an individual record in tables from 10,000 BCE to 2200 CE. It's over 1.4 million records thereabouts, 1.49 or something, I think, from memory. I may be out by a bit, but it's a lot of records. And every single day is a unique record. So it is not possible for the system to muck up a day, a week, a month, a year. It was just qualifying why you got a different number. So I hope that answers the question, Judah, and if I haven't, please let me know, but I hope it does answer your question. Look, I'm going to go to the next caller now, and if anyone else wants to call live, please press star 8, hash 8, 
We'd love to hear from you. I'm just going to speak now to Swanda. Hello, Swanda, can you hear us? Hello. Hi. Oh, yes, um, Frank. The question is with the UCC you described earlier. Uh, sent the UCC in, and do I need to write a letter to the UCC to uh, be recognized as general executive? No, look, I think um, hopefully you can hear me. You're breaking up a bit, but uh, hopefully you can uh, hear, my, hear my response. The, the UCC system is merely for the registration of a claim of a legal debt. That's all the UCC system is, is supposed to do. It is supposed to allow for the registration of a legitimate claim of debt. Um, the system requires, the system permits um, certain uh, relationships at a low level, uh, but it also allows, um, for example, the uh, introduction of liens for an unpaid uh, debt. But our position under UCC is largely determined by our position as defined by other government departments like the IRS. Um, the UCC is recorded usually by the Secretary of State of the particular uh, state, uh, or if we are going from outside to the Secretary of State in uh, Washington uh, for outside or Delaware, for outside corporations that are registered in Delaware, uh, such as Australia and Canada as corporations. But there is no requirement, and if you add paperwork with a UCC that is non-standard, it will mean that the recording will fail. Um, it's really a question of what you were filing, what you were filing and why, to get to the heart of your um, uncertainty as to why you haven't received a um, copy of it being recorded. Do you want to give us a bit of background on what, what you were trying to do? Um, my children were kidnapped five years ago, and I uh, have tried the uh, went to the Supreme Court, and now doing a commercial lien against the keepers of stolen property. Okay. Well, I think you've probably been being blessed that uh, there's been no recognition of it being recorded. Um, I would suggest to you that that is a very dangerous thing to do uh, because uh, if, if your position as the uh, occupant of the Office of General Executor of your estate uh, was established and uh, you had, for example, uh, your will as a deed recorded um, and that you uh, moved once you had that established, then as the occupant of the Office of General Executive of your estate, you're also the guardian of your estate, and that is the presumption that they are using against you to take any minors. They are claiming guardianship because they are claiming to be the executor uh, of your estate. Not the general executor, but a, uh, effectively an, an executor um, uh, dative or a, an executor lucratus. So... I would be going down that angle, and I would certainly steer very clear from uh, trying to do the liens. All that the, all that will happen with that is that they will put you in prison. Um, I, I, it's a sad route. I, I I I'm very sad to hear what has happened to you, but I would strongly suggest that the the powers that they're using to have taken your children is the powers assumed of, of being a uh, of being a guardian. And believe it or not, it's the UN rights of a child that is now used to um, argue that states have not only the power but an obligation under the United Nations to take children away from parents who they don't believe are good parents. It's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. But the only, the only way to defeat that is to um, effectively 
uh, negate the uh, presumption uh, of their guardianship not to go down the route.